So I bought this stick of UHMW, I think it is. It's like a self lubricating plastic with the intention of uh, cutting it into little squares, four squares, and either installing it on this partition or or onto the cart in place of a furniture pad to, uh, you know, metal on metal squeaking is not good. I was going to put this on the partition, but now I'm thinking I should put it on the cart because... The plastic rubbing on the cart's eventually going to wear off the paint. And I'd rather wear off paint on the, the divider than the set cart. Alright, hopefully this is the last road trip with the Fernie pad. And this coming weekend I'll get the plastic installed. Alright, I got a four and a half, maybe five hour drive to location tomorrow. It's 2 p.m. call time, so I'm gonna hit the road about 6 a.m. Meet up with the producer, have lunch, and then we'll proceed out to location. It's a network assignment interview, uh, correspondent and subject. It's a two camera interview. They actually asked for two Amiras, but um, as you, if you've watched my channel, you know I have one Amira with me here in Texas. My other package is in Los Angeles. So, um, and I'm like, oh, I can sub rent. It's going to affect the cost a little bit. And I'm like, don't worry about it. We'll shoot on your FX nines. So we get the two FX nines. I threw the mirror in the truck with the 17 to 120, just in case, like if we go to B roll mode, I'd rather shoot on the Amira. Um, and also two camera interview with two people. I mean, I'd rather seat them. So they're looking at each other and have a wide shot third angle. So I threw a third tripod in and maybe we'll just run the Amira as a wide shot if there's time. And then uh, this is an exterior interview. So I threw my little Honda generator on, got the two Geminis, I got some silks. I don't think we're gonna silk. And then the rock and rollers in here, but I don't think we're gonna need it. We, I should be able to pull right up to where we're working. And then um, we shoot out this interview, maybe a little bit of B-roll. And then I have the option to stay in a hotel and expense it back. But I'm thinking I may just hit the road, drive till I get tired, because it's cooled off here in Texas. It's getting down into the 50s at night. So I think I'm gonna opt for uh, hit the road and I'll sleep in the truck. And if I, if I get all dusty and sweaty and gross, because it is gonna be in the mid 80s, Maybe I'll do the $13 truck stop shower uh, before I go to bed, but I can also hotel, but yeah, I'm just gonna sleep for like five, six hours. I just assume sleep in my, my uh, little tunnel back here. Picked up the producer at the DFW airport. We had an amazing barbecue lunch in the Dallas area. And then we drove uh, about another hour up uh, north to this location. So this is a interview with a CBS correspondent and the what uh, became the uh, professional bull riding world champion for 2021. This was just before the world finals in Las Vegas, and it was pretty much a, a lockup uh, from a points perspective. That uh, despite his injuries, uh, looked like he was going to be the champ. So uh, we got this uh, quick sit down interview that I believe aired on the network. I'm not sure if it was the week before finals, or it must have been from a storyline perspective. I don't know. I never see the finished edits on these things. But uh, basically, we're here in the stables. We ended up going with two cameras. Very smart producer. This is the ongoing challenge that you have when you have a two-camera interview where you've got your two subjects facing each other, and you want the key lights to be on the favorable side. You know, They're basically looking in the direction of their light source. So when you have three cameras, you need to you know, rig your light sources from overhead because obviously in the two shot, you'd have your, your lights in frame. Um, and that's just not practical without a crew and a grip truck and rigging. You know, in the stable situation, that high ceiling, we'd have menace arms arming the lights out. But now I'm in a full grip package and, you know, at least plus two on the grip and lighting side. So for these quick interviews, like, I don't know, this was probably a 60, maybe 90 second package that ran, I don't know, maybe two minutes, but uh, we just grabbed a generic 
two shot. I stripped the lights away uh, after the interview concluded, and that was the extent of our B-roll. I actually grabbed uh, some long lens angles over the shoulders from like, I don't know, 7,500 feet away. So we had three different masters to break up the edits, and then uh, I assume they also used a bunch of show uh, running footage to cover the interview. And then uh, it was just me and the producer. So producer ran one camera, I ran the other. I placed my camera's monitor over on the producer's side so he could see both frames. And then uh, he came in with the audio kit. It's two Sandkin COS 11D mics hardwired to my camera. And then the two cameras are time code locked. And uh, yeah, we were there on site uh, a little over an hour. I think it might have been 70 minutes on site. And I had uh, about an hour, uh, four and a half hour drive up to Dallas. And you, yeah, maybe 45 minutes to an hour drive from there out to location plus lunch. I think all in, door to door. I ended up getting all the way home same day. I felt good, charged right through. But uh, I think it was like a six hour, excuse me, 16 hour portal pull to a portal day for me with three meals on the road uh, but it was all good I had the next day off and just kind of chilled slept in took a nap and uh, yeah good times had that truck full of a gear with all these contingencies planned and uh, we ended up using two sticks two cameras one monitor two lights two stands two lav mics could have done it all with uh, yeah three pelican cases but that's how it goes Never know what you're in for till you get there. Good shoot, good people. Excited to do more with these folks in the coming 2022 season. One idea I've had for many years and just haven't gotten around to piecing it all together is uh, regarding doing the menace arm thing. You know, I've thought about using maybe like the Matthews boom pole stand and extension telescoping stand with some of those fabric LEDs, like I believe Westcott makes a like roll up LED panel. Now essentially I'm looking for something that's super lightweight that I can use a chintzy aluminum stand and boom arm. Just, to, you know, if I have two chairs that are say five feet away from each other, I just need to reach over each person's head to get the key light on the, the far side. So I can have a traditional three camera, two person interview but be able to do that with uh, the micro size crew. I mean, you can keep fighting it, but the reality is the future of all of this stuff is smaller, lighter, leaner, and yet good enough. All right, that's it for this week. I got a bunch of footage on my phone. I've been on the road. I went back to California uh, for, I think it was 11 or 12 days. Came back, shot some more days here in Texas. At some point, I'll get those up. I'm trying to kind of push these out like once a week. I know sometimes it takes me 10 to 14 days to get the next video out. Appreciate all the comments and viewers. You guys keep me motivated to continue capturing this stuff and commenting on it. So uh, please keep up the comments. I appreciate it. Thanks.